In this video, we're going to talk about a bond bought at par. This is our third part. You can see the third video in a three-part series on uh, bond amortization tables. Uh, so you'll see what I mean by a bond bought, bought at par in just a second. So here's the example. You could buy a four-year, uh, we buy a four-year 1,000 face value bond redeemable at 1,200 with the 3% annual coupons. First, let's determine the price of the bond to yield 2.5% annual effective. Remember, you always buy a price, you always buy a bond at a price to yield uh, a certain rate. Uh, so uh, in this case, then, our timeline is going to look like this. The coupon amounts are going to be 30 at the end of years 1, 2, 3, and 4. And at the time of the fourth coupon of 30, we're also going to get the redemption value of 1,200 back. So the price will be the present value of all these payments at a 2.5% interest rate. That's a one-step calculation, TVM calculation. Uh, when we go through that, you'll see that's exactly 1,200. So in this case, the price was actually equal to the redemption value. So when the price is greater than the redemption value, we say the bonds bought at a premium. When the price was less than the redemption value, we say the bonds bought at a discount. And now when the price is equal to the redemption value, we say the bond is bought at par. It's a terrible choice of words. Absolutely terrible because par means face value, a par value and face value. So beware here. Bought at par means the price is equal to the redemption value. Bought at par does not mean that the price is equal to the par or face value. That would say that the price was equal to the, uh, if the, if the bond was bought at the face value, then it would mean the price was equal to the face value of 1000 in this example. But it's not the price is 1200 it's the redemption value. But again, nobody asked me when they were asked, when they were uh, talking about how to word certain things. Nobody, nobody asked me uh, about how to word a situation like this. Uh, I would have. I would have come down on them for, for suggesting to word this as bought at par, but that it is what it is. So bought at par means that the price is equal to the redemption value. It does not mean that the price is equal to the face or par value. Okay. Now, on the other hand, when it says a bond is redeemable at par, redeemable at par means that the redemption value is equal to the par value or face value. So that makes sense to me. Redeemable at par, bought at par does not make sense to me. Okay, so I'll move on from, from this. Uh, let's look at the amortization table for this particular situation. Uh, at, at time zero, what we know when we buy the bond is that uh, well, it's going to be coupon payments at times one, two, three, and four of 30, and then a redemption value of 1200. We calculated the price to be 1200, so the, the book value at time zero, the price is 1200. We bought it to yield a 2.5% uh, uh, annual effective interest rate. So the company, when we lend, uh, we lend the company $1,200, at time one, they're going to owe us interest on that $1,200, and interest on that $1,200 will be 1,200 times 0 0.025, and that turns out to be exactly 30. And so the payment was exactly the amount of the interest that we earned. That hardly, you know, that, that only happens in this situation. Uh, that's going to make the principal adjustment zero. That's going to make the book value at time one the same as the book value at time at time zero. We lent them $1,200 at time zero. At time one, they gave us exactly what they owed us in interest. And so at, at, at time one, we still have lent them $1,200. Uh, the same thing happens on levels two, on level three, and level four. Exactly the same thing happens. I went ahead on the next slide and, and, and kept... Uh, uh, kept all these remarks from before because these are remarks that are true for loan amortization tables, for bond amortization tables, whether the bonds bought at a premium or a discount. Now, bond bought at par is kind of trivial. Uh, for instance, the first remark, do the, do the P columns, do they form a, a, a geometric sequence? Well, I guess I can think of it as a geometric sequence because if I, uh, I go from one, one P value to the next, if I take zero and I multiply that times one plus I, I get zero again. So I guess trivially it, it kind of does uh, makes it, it does work uh, the remark two if you add up that P column you get zero and well you're supposed to get the cap B sub zero value minus the cap B sub N value in other words the price minus the redemption value and you will get zero because the price and the redemption value are both 1200 and and then uh, the the third remark I just kept there because it's these are remarks that are true for all these amortization uh, tables level payments 
uh, amortization tables. So now there's a question that I want to uh, 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 bring up. What is, and that is, uh, let's determine a condition that's, uh, that would be required in order for a bond to be bought at par. Uh, so uh, w can we come up with a condition? What I mean by that is, is you know, when we purchase the bond, the, the things that we'll know are the face amount, cap F, the redemption value, cap R, the coupon rate R, and the yield rate I. So can we relate those four symbols in a way that would, uh, that would require the bond to be bought uh, at par? And so I th we can do that. We do that by looking at this particular amortization table and notice that the payment coupon amounts, in this case 30, would have to be exactly equal to the interest earned each period, which is 30. So let's just look at that very first line. Uh, the payment coupon, 30, well, the, the payment coupon is the face amount times the, the uh, coupon rate. So that's a cap F times R. And then the 30, that's the cap I1, would be the interest rate, the yield rate I times the book value at time zero. But the book value at time zero is the price, and to be bought at par means the price is equal to the redemption value. So it's the redemption value that I'm going to know at purchase. And so when I plug that redemption value in cap R for the cap B zero uh, in, the, in the line where I have solved cap I sub one equals I times, uh, now it will be times R. And, and then those two, the cap C and the cap I one would have to be equal. In other words, cap F times R would, if cap F times R is equal to cap R times I, then the bond is bought at par and, and, and vice versa. Okay, so now the rest of the videos, I want to talk about a, uh, another bond pricing formula that this kind of leads into. This last question there that we answered leads into this other pricing formula. Um, I'm going to derive the pricing formula here, but, uh, but I, uh, you don't really need to know the derivation. You need to know the punchline at the end. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, show you what I, I suggest you commit to memory at the end of, uh, of the video here. Okay. So let's start with, uh, you know, we got the price, we got the coupon payments here, cap C values are the, the face amount times uh, the, the coupon rate, cap F times R. The price, the standard pricing formula is just the present value of all of these payments. And of course the cap C value is the cap F times R. So this is the standard pricing formula. I'm gonna play a trick here in, in, um, uh, that in order to derive this other formula, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug, throw in, add in an R, and a cap R, and subtract a cap R. So I'm really adding zero to the right-hand side. I'm not changing anything. And once I do that, what I want to do is I want to group together the last two terms there. And in those last two terms, they both have a cap R in them, so I want to factor out a minus cap R. When I factor out a minus cap R, because that last term has a plus in front of it, when I factor out a minus cap R, I'll get in parentheses a one minus a V to the end. The next thing that I want to do is another one, one the final trick, and this is another trick where I don't change the expression at all, and I don't do that by uh, taking that last term and multiplying by one, and I'm thinking of multiplying the one being an i over i. The reason I'm doing that is because then I can group together the one minus v to the n in parentheses with the i in the denominator, and that's a, the closed root formula for an a angle n. So that last term becomes the cap R times the I that's in black, and then all of that times what's in red is an A angle N. Uh, and then the next thing that I want to do is just, I'm, I'm just kind of deriving this formula. The next thing I want to do is take the first two terms and interchange them, just interchange the order in which I write them. And I'm doing that because now the last two terms both have an A angle N in them. I'm going to factor out an A angle N. I'm going to leave that over on the right-hand side when I factor it out. And when I factor out, I get a cap F times R minus a cap R times I uh, in parentheses. So this is what's sometimes referred to as the premium discount formula. And uh, it, it's, it's referred to as a premium discount formula because it's very easy to take this formula and just... Uh, uh, to see whether right away the bond is bought at a premium or a discount just from the, the wording of the problem. Um, let, let me rewrite this formula one extra way, and that is by subtracting the cap R from both sides. So the left-hand side becomes a cap P minus uh, cap R, and then the right-hand side becomes this expression uh, in parentheses cap F R minus cap R I, close parentheses, and then times an A angle N. So I want to focus my attention right now on the right-hand side of that last expression uh, that has the, uh, the parentheses times the A angle N. 
look, A angle N is always going to be a positive value. All right. Now, on the left-hand side of that equation, the cap P minus cap R, you know, that's going to help me determine whether the bond is bought at a premium or a discount. Remember, a premium, uh, a bond bought at a premium means that the price is greater than the redemption value. And so the left-hand side of that equal sign, the price minus the redemption value, if that's a positive number, it, then this bond was bought at a, at a premium. If it's negative, the bond was bought at a discount. And if it's zero, the price would be equal to the redemption value. And that means the bond was bought at par. Okay, so now when would the bond be bought at a premium? Well, if cap P minus cap R was greater than zero. The, the only way it could be greater than zero is if I look at the right-hand side of that equation, the A angle N factor is always greater than zero, so I need what's in parentheses to be greater than zero, which mean, which would imply then that, it, that cap F R times R minus cap R times I. I'm sorry. If cap F times R is greater than cap R times I, then what's in parentheses would be positive. That would make the whole expression positive. That would make the price greater than the redemption value, which means the bond would be bought at a premium. And in fact, the amount of the premium would be equal to the right-hand side of that equation. That uh, Remember, the amount of the premium is the difference between the price and the redemption value. That's So that would be the right-hand side of that equation. Uh, if cap F times R was less than cap R times I, then what's on the right-hand side of that last equation is a negative. That, mean, that would imply that the price would be less than the redemption value. Uh, in, in other words, the, the bond would be bought at a discount. The amount of the discount would be the absolute value of the right-hand side. It, the right-hand side would be negative because it's bought at a discount, so the price is less than the redemption value. So the right-hand side would have been negative. The absolute value of that is uh, what the amount of the discount is. And then finally, if, uh, if cap F times R is equal to cap R times I, this is what we've answered in the question leading into this, uh, into this premium discount formula. If cap F times R is equal to cap R times I, then the bond is bought at par, meaning the price would actually be equal to the redemption value. Okay, so this is a nice little formula that I, I, can, I suggest you commit to memory, this premium discount formula. You don't need to know the derivation of the formula. You just need to know the, what the formula is, and it's, it's useful in, in certain situations. Situations. Okay, so that does it for um, uh, right now. That does it for the loan I'm sorry, bond amortization table material. So we'll move on to uh, to something else next. I'll see you in the next video.